I just finished the Lycanius Trilogy by James Islington, and I have some thoughts. So the Lycanius Trilogy is the shadow of what was lost, an echo of things to come, and the light of all that falls. Now this series is one that, I don't know if I've read another series that I'm as conflicted as I am with this one. There are a lot of things I like and a lot of things I don't like. But overall, I did give this story or the series a probably four and a half star rating. Out of 100, I gave the first book 82, second book 83, and the third book 88. So I did really like how it wrapped everything up. Before I picked up the series, I had heard some people say this is similar to Wheel of Time, and I kind of get it based on the storyline. You have a time period where some powerful people were able to create this barrier to hold off the Dark One or the bad guys in the series. But that barrier is starting to fail and things are crossing over and really starting to impact everyone's lives. Basically, the world is at risk. Problem is, the people that create that barrier, they're gone. They're nowhere to be found. But you do have a young group of people that do have the same powers that these legends of old have. But having those powers in this time period is actually more of a death sentence. People no longer have respect for the people with those powers. They don't trust them. Instead, if you're discovered having those powers, they want to get rid of you. So you need the people with the powers in order to stop the Dark One. But at the same time, the people that have those powers are virtually crucified. So from that point of view, I get the Wheel of Time comparison. But actually reading it though, to me it didn't feel like Wheel of Time at all. It didn't have that type of atmosphere. It actually felt a lot more like Lightbringer by Brent Weeks to me. In that there are so many characters that keep kind of flipping sides of are they a good guy? Are they a bad guy? What are their motives? Can you trust them? Can you not trust them? And from that point of view, Lightbringer was very similar. So storyline of Wheel of Time, feel of Lightbringer. So I guess that would be the comparison I would make. I already mentioned that overall I'd give this four and a half stars. So I clearly did like the series, but I was conflicted. So let's get into some of the things I didn't like to begin with. First, there are some elements that are frequently used in this series that I don't like seeing in my fantasy novels. And that includes time travel, miscommunication, and one that really bugs me is multiple characters had multiple names. So there is at least three characters, maybe four characters that went by different names depending on who was talking to them or what time period they were in or just what was going on in the story. And that drives me crazy. This was already a confusing story and I would actually say it was excessively confusing. I think it made it more confusing than it needed to be. And having characters that had multiple names just added to the confusion and it wasn't necessary at all. Meanwhile, time travel, it's one of those what came first, the chicken or the egg. If someone comes back in time and to change the timeline, then the current timeline doesn't happen and it creates a circular logic that I don't like trying to keep track of in the books and miscommunication. I don't know anyone who likes the miscommunication trope. This was done, I mean, time travel and miscommunication were both done better than I've seen them in any other series. But just being there bugged me. There's a lot of mistrust in this series and it's because people are keeping secrets. And sometimes the secrets are justified, other times they're not. So it's done as well as it could be, but I wish there was other ways to do it. Another thing that really bugged me is there are a group that are called augurs and they used to be like the ruling class. They had the most amount of power. And at this point in time, it's not necessarily very well known what their 
powers were, how they work, which means the new augurs that are learning, they seem like they can have any power they need to have in order to move the plot forward. Because augurs have different strengths, so what one's good at, the other one might not be able to do at all. So it just really bugged me how many times someone had a new ability that was never mentioned before. Or, oh, this person could have been able to get out of this because they have that ability, but I don't have it, so I'm going to be stuck. And it just wasn't well-defined. And as a fan of hard magic systems, this one often felt like it was a very soft magic system. It's not because technically everything is defined, but it's defined individually as to who can do what, and you don't necessarily know what they can do and what they could fully do until they go about actually doing it. So from that point of view, was a big fan of the magic system, or at least not how it was used. Another element of the book that I'm not a big fan of, it's just all the flashbacks. Specifically in book two, there's a ton of flashbacks. Almost half the book is flashbacks. And Nico and I were talking about it, and he mentioned something that he would enjoy a whole book that was just the flashbacks. And actually, I think I would enjoy that book too. But having the flashbacks in the story, I just tend to struggle with those in general. Maybe it's just being an audiobook reader, but it's really hard to keep track of when a flashback starts and when it ends and how the timelines interlace. And again, I think he did it better than most, but it's still something I don't enjoy. And it took me a while to get into book two because of all the flashbacks. Now, the last two things I want to talk about that I didn't like is... One's a very simple one, and it's a very minor one. It's the phrase, let out a breath they didn't know they were holding. Now, that's a phrase that's overused in fantasy to begin with. This felt like every character was forgetting that they were holding their breath. At one point, I was waiting for someone to pass out because they didn't know they were holding their breath. That's how often this was happening. It was ridiculous. Thankfully, third book didn't have that as much, they let out breaths. They didn't let out the breath they didn't know they were holding. So seeing that phrase once in a book, maybe twice in a book, okay. Seeing it 10, 15, 20, maybe even 25 times in the book, that was excessive. Now the last thing was there's two characters that are developed throughout the whole first book. And then in the second book, they kind of are sent off on their own. They have something they need to do. And they don't really even describe what it is they need to do. They just say, I need to go take care of something. And please give me your blessing to go do this. So they do. And then they're gone. And then they're still gone. And then they're still gone. And then the third book begins. And you still haven't seen them. And then you're halfway through the third book and you still haven't seen them. They do eventually show up, but they were gone too long. One, it was kind of obvious that, well, you spent all this time developing them. Clearly, they're going to come back into the story at some point. And two, it was, well, they're going to come back in the story and save the day because why else would you write them in, send them off, and then send them back? It just seemed obvious that they were going to come back. They were going to save the day. But it didn't go into how they were able to save the day or really what their journey was. I did hear when I was talking to Nico that the author said he had to cut their part out of the book because it got too long. And that at one point he was considering writing another book that just followed those characters. But who knows if that's ever going to happen. Either way, it didn't flow well for this story. They needed to become involved again earlier on. So that wasn't just a here I am to save the day type of moment, which is what it ended up being. So those are the things I didn't like about the book. What I did like about the book was I was very invested in the characters, especially the main four of how their stories were going to end. And there is enough foreshadowing where I could guess what was going to happen sometimes 
and other times it led me astray. So I was constantly wanting to read to see if my prediction of what was going to happen actually did happen or not and how it was going to happen. And the ratio of how often I was right to how often I was wrong was just the perfect amount that I was never going to be sure if I was right with any of my guesses. So that really kept me moving in these books. But the plot itself kept me moving. It was interesting. It was exciting. There is a lot of action. The world building was really well done. I understood the politics. I did understand the magic for the most part. I've already complained about the augers and how sometimes they could add abilities or lose abilities. But for how complex of a world this was, I felt like I did understand it, and I did understand the main philosophical debate that was going on of who's good, who's bad, and where they stand and why they stand there, and the complexity of being friends with people, being best friends with people, but being on the other side because you have a fundamental difference of opinion, where you can think that they're wrong, and you will fight them on that point and you will do everything you can to convince them they're wrong and but at the end of the day they're still your friends you still enjoy talking to them you still enjoy their company and you want to be with them but you want them to agree with you as well and you want them to see the world the way you see the world so all of that was really really well done and then the ending I'll be honest the ending caught me by surprise and there is a part of it now this is partly because of my own personal history but there is a part of this story that truly did bring some tears to my eyes and that's not something a lot of books do now again I've had some things go on in my life where there's triggers that are more likely to make that happen but I was not expecting that from this series at all and it delivered that's a big reason the third book ended up getting a rating of 88 from me, whereas the first two got 82 and 83. I was not expecting such an emotional hit at all at any point during this series. So to have that in there on top of the character work and the plot and everything else I talked about was absolutely fantastic. I don't know if it will hit others as hard as it hit me. I actually doubt it will hit most people as hard as it hit me. But I think it's still a good moment. So that's what I thought of the Lacanius Trilogy by James Islington. Let me know what you think if you read it. This is a book that was on my shelf for about a year and a half before I got to it. And I've talked to a lot of other people that have said they've had it for a while and it's one of the oldest books on their TBR. I'd recommend giving it a chance. So again, let me know what you thought if you've read it. And if you haven't read it, let me know if you're going to pick it up sometime. And until next time, bye.